Hi guys, um, I've um, had uh, an influx of messages recently asking me what I should go out and buy and what tools do you use and what's the best paints to buy and uh, I'm going to be quite honest and say it, it, it's a really tough question um, I mean paint wise um, some people would argue that Reaper's the best others would uh, argue that P3 are the best um, others would argue that um, Vallejo model colours are um, the best um, and it's it's hard to say which, which, which person's right and which one's wrong because I mean all of those paints I've just mentioned are actually good paints um, me personally if I was starting out um, now in the hobby um, as a beginner there's one line of paints I would advise uh, sorry ad uh, avoid sorry um, and it'd be the uh, GWs, and not because of poor paints, um, far from it, um, they're actually a good um, a brand of paint, and the reason why I'd avoid, avoid sorry, the um, GW paints is uh, two reasons. One, as we can see from this tub here, the design is very, very poor. Um, when you keep open and uh, closing these, it'll get um, paint clogged up at the back there, which will cause the tub um, to dry out way quicker than it needs to um, which is good for GW because it means you've got to go out and buy more paints but it's bad for you because um, your uh, invested money in the product is uh, going to be wasted after a relatively short time if you're not very careful um, with the design of, of the uh, tub um, another reason is I don't like painting from the tub um, uh, when you get to a certain stage in the hobby when you start to uh, get to a, a fair um, degree of knowledge of, of what paint goes with what and how many drops you want to dilute something or you want to mix your own colours it, it becomes very tiresome trying to make an accurate mix out of this tub whereas the, the paints that I use uh, Vallejo um, they all come in dropper bottles uh, like this and as you can see you just literally squirt it straight out the nozzle and you can accurately control how much paint you want out um, there's no possibility of you spilling it over um, by knocking it with your paintbrush or your hand um, it's it's not going to dry out because it's a tight seal uh, around the uh, bottle there so it's going to last longer and more uh, crucially as well um, you get 13 mil uh, in this pot and in this part you get 17 mil so uh, you get 5 mil more and not only do you get 5 mil more um, this paint here costs about 50p um, or more than this paint um, certain paints uh, you'll find in different lines work better um, I'm going to actually uh, show you an experiment with these. Um, you may have seen uh, in the videos recently where I've actually been um, raving about these Vallejo Model Air um, paints um, and how good they are. Um, I'm going to try and show a little demonstration of, of the reason uh, why, why they're so good. Um, let's go straight to that here. I've got a base. I've not primed it or done anything with it. Um, for the experiment that I want to do, I don't think I'll need to. So first of all, we're going to go straight over to the palette um, here. And this was from one of the children's uh, Christmas toys. Couldn't tell you which one. So another thing, you know, you want to use a palette. You don't have to go out and buy an expensive palette. Um, I just literally use Tupperware, plastics, um, sweet boxes, anything I can get a uh, hold of really. Um, old um, used CD, blank CDs, uh, anything like that's uh, a good palette and you can use it. So, you know, don't think you've got to go out there and buy an expensive palette. Use whatever's to hand. Uh, so, I'm just going to put a drop of this and you can instantly see when that went on there. Let's zoom in. I'll get a brush um, just to show you that this brush here it's a uh, non-branded cheap brush but you can still get good results with a cheap brush that's an, an, another myth that 
you know you have to use a very very expensive brush as long as it's not those cheap nasty ones that uh, you, you get in uh, those kids uh, learn to to paint books you know you'll be all right um, so I'm not going to dilute this paint um, the first time around I will in a I will in a bit um, but let's just pop some of this on here sorry I'm just getting this back into focus there we go I want to stay in as zoomed as I can and see how thin and how smooth that color covers now like I say this has not been primed or anything like that um, I would advise everyone to do that normally but for this test it's just not needed nice and thin now the reason why this goes on so nice is because the pigment is uh, ground I believe 10 times thinner than most normal pigments uh, and obviously with a um, let's give this a shake with a metallic paint you want those metal flecks in the, in the paint to be as thin as possible you don't want any clumps right now let's go over to the GW1 oh here we go see this here this is my this is my point that was caked around the inside and that was preventing it from being a perfect air, teal, uh, air sealed um, uh, clasp around the uh, jar there so that's what we don't want uh, see if we can get it to focus on the paintbrush and you can see how thick and gloopy that is right okay now if I was painting that onto any top, look at look, see how thick that is it's almost uh, like a gloopy gluey type texture look if I was painting that onto any type of detail um, like on the little feathers of an, a killer um, you're gonna lose all the detail it's just gonna clog it up and it's gonna look like one big mess uh, you can thin it down and that's what we're gonna do next so we're gonna paint that straight on on a flat surface it's not too bad because you can spread it out and it's not going to cause a problem but if you was painting anything um, with detail you, you're going to get quite quite a bit of problems there I'm going to cut it here and we're going to go on to start thinning the paints hi guys back again um, here we have the GW paint as you can see by the uh, look of it in the palette here and obviously I'm gonna water this down now because there's no way I personally could paint with a paint that thick it just ruin all the detail on my uh, miniatures so we're gonna water that down and when you start watering the paint down you're gonna see all the flecks starting to separate from the paint stir it around still a bit too thick Mix it in as much as I can. Yeah, we'll get away with that. I'm gonna hold this here and I'm gonna look you can see I've I've paint I've made it thin so and you can see how watery it is. I'll try it probably not perfect on this light but you can see the sparkle of the flex basically it's just like now it's become um, water and just tiny little metal flex which which are broken up so you're gonna get like a glitter effect um, and that's not what you want um, and I've literally watered down the, the uh, GW to about the thickness of the uh, model air color there um, I'm going to cut it and we're going to go back with um, the Vallejo model air colour and I'm going to water that down as well. I'm going to see what sort of results we get with that. Right, back again. I've just put a, a fresh dollop of the um, Vallejo colour in there and I'm going to water that down a bit. I don't need to water this down that much because as you can see, see how thin it is? It's just dripping down there so we're going to water it down a bit. 
and then I'm going to pick that same. Oh, and we'll see what we get here. See perfect coverage. And we'll look at the other one. It just looks like water. Water with tiny little flecks in. I know it's hard to pick up on camera, but if you was actually seeing this live, you'd understand the reason why the uh, Vallejo uh, metallics are so much better. Um, you could get a nice flat, even uh, surface that looks, you know, very metallic y um, without having thick paint. And idealistically, and that's what you want. You want to be able to put your thin paints down thin without clogging up any of the detail, but you want that thin paint to uh, be nice and even. Um, the Vallejo um, game color and the model color metallics are good. Um, I'd say that the, the, the model metallics from what I've seen on forums um, it is, is quite good, but nothing can compare to the uh, coverage you're gonna get with the um, Vallejo model uh, air metallics. Um, there is others on the market that I know to be better, but then, then you go into like um, serious sort of like modelers territory when you're talking of um, uh, metallics based in alcohol, and, and then you got um, 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 ones that are uh, specifically made just to be airbrushed, and then you literally buff them with a cloth. Um, but if you want to use an acrylic uh, paint for simple results and to be able to um, paint without spoiling any of the detail um, I definitely recommend the uh, Vallejo model air <laughs> okay um, right so that's uh, that's it for that one and uh, I hope that's helped out a few of the people messaging me uh, asking me um, why why you'd recommend the uh, model air metallics Okay, thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.